kyrkan, det är Niklas Persson. Välkommen ut! I can hear some Danish in the crowd now. <laughs> okay, so I will give this in uh, English, and as you can see, it's quite a cheesy title. <laughs> the pow heart, the power to change the world. So I got inspired to talk to this because I found these old recordings from a lecture a long time ago in STF. He was called Patrick Nolan, and uh, he was quite a lecturer. He gave really interesting thoughts and things and he was also kind of like a stand-up comedian at the same time so you were laughing really crazy and also being really inspired which was a really weird combo but so i listened to that found some speech and i thought i was going to talk about that so let's start let's dive right into it so the first quote i found that trufaris is about heart is that there is no life without heart so if we look upon it so we have the physical body and yeah, if we take away the heart, you cease to exist and you basically die. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to start to plan your funeral. So that, it makes sense for that purpose. But I think he talked more probably about the spiritual heart that we believe that we have a, not just something that pumps blood, but some heart that has some other meaning. And if we take that away, life doesn't really have any more meaning. Why, why live if we don't have the heart? And when we talk about heart, we need to talk about love. Mm. We cannot deny love, the power of love. Do you want to hear some cheesy quotes? Yes. Yes, so let's go. I have learned not to worry about love, but to honor its coming with all my heart. I don't know what the source is, but it's from somewhere cheesy. And so we can, and we you hear expressions like, I love you with all my heart. I loved him, but he broke my heart. Usually people connect love with heart. It's pretty obvious for most people. And what Father says about heart and love is heart is a source of love. God has an ideal within him, just as we have an ideal we long for within our hearts. So how does love come about? And then love is the force which unites. So you can think yourself when you love something. Usually you're in unity with it. You don't. If you think about two people fighting, they're not in unity, so there is no love. But you need unity for in order to be love, to the power of love to come forth. And then I open the principal book to find how does it define love. And now you will see something you have seen before. Uh, so how does it work? So it defines it with a subject and object having a relationship in a relationship of love and beauty. So that's how it defines love. So we have the subject and an object and there is some common base happening between these. It can be anything, something that you makes you relate to the object and then love comes about. You give love and back comes beauty. And the thing about love though is that this is for the Harry Potter fans out there. Um, <laughs> love in itself is neither neither good or evil it's based upon the direction and purpose so if it's based on goodness then it will create something greater when the sub object comes together and if it's based on selfishness wickedness or evilness whatever name you want to call it it will be some create something destructive it's not going to be good for you so an example here is harry potter he fights for his family friends because this guy voldemort is very selfish he wants the, all the power in the world and the only thing he wants is power and to rule everyone. He doesn't care about anyone. And Harry Potter wants to fight for goodness, for his friends and family, everyone he loves, so that they can live in a good world. So what he fights for, we can say, is quite is something worth fighting for. It's something that will last. But what Voldemort is doing, there's, he will never, his power, his thirst for power will never be. He will never feel satisfied. It's destructive. It has no future. And to understand more about beauty, love and beauty, we can think about love like light. And if you think about light, the reflection of light is color, which is kind of suiting for beauty. So if we are, for example, in a museum and there's a lot of light, we can see all the colors, all the shape. We can experience more beauty in this room, more color. But if you have less light, then suddenly the colors are not as defined. You can maybe distinguish in some kind of darkish color. The shapes are not as clear. 
so there's less uh, color. And if you have no light at all, it's a total darkness, no uh, color whatsoever. And that you can relate to love. The more love you give, the more beauty you get. Less love, less love. No love at all, there's no beauty. And then if we look at this more examples, we have the classic of an art critic uh, who gives love. He sees this painting and there's something in his painting that he really, really likes. And he gets beauty back from it. And some of us might see this painting and think it's the ugliest thing that ever existed. It's very personal how we like things. But what is the result then of beauty? Because we can experience beauty for all our senses. We can taste beautiful food, like great food, or hear a beautiful song, see something great, smell something beautiful. I'm not really sure what that touch symbol is. Touch your knitting? No. <laughs> uh, let's just say give a really warm hug to someone. What do you feel when you experience these things? Happiness, joy. And let's, so let's take a more uh, personal ex example for everyone here. Who likes, who here likes coffee? Yeah. Yeah. So I have a, because uh, I have an interesting question here. So who here, the first time you drank coffee thought it was the best thing ever. It just tasted amazing. <laughs> One, three, three people. But the rest, you didn't like it the first time, but now you can't be without it. So uh, sometimes this love and beauty relationship is not just, an instant it takes a long time maybe for it to happen so maybe you drank your first cup ah it was okay but you like that energy kick that you got probably and the next time you're like mm, it's you know it's nice it's cozy it's warm and the more you try it, the more you invest into this suddenly bam something happens you just i love coffee and you drink it for the rest of your life people even uh, set their coffee machine in the morning and that's kind of their alarm which i understood Kind of like it's hard to wake up but when i hear the coffee machine brewing in the morning it's easier to get up in the morning so you feel a lot of joy drinking your cup of coffee this is me <laughs> i don't love coffee i never really tried it no no there's no beauty coming from coffee for me there is no joy and uh, my parents drink a lot of coffee none of our siblings drink coffee and i think that's if my parents have to say the saddest thing about their life is that none of their kids drink coffee <laughs> i would assume they she always says it's a tragedy <laughs> we'll see there's another personal example me and sue talked about this yesterday that uh this is usually what i like to eat when i was seven years old meatballs baked beans and rice yeah. and you who are good at cooking you know that if you only have these three ingredients it's kind of hard to be creative but this was the only thing I wanted to eat, nothing else. I was like, this is it, nothing else. So I, my love for food was pretty, pretty slim, but this gave me a lot of joy. But I also think, now I don't eat this, but I think you get tired of eating the same food. So I think I wanted, I wanted to try new things. I don't really remember, but that was a good example how limited you can be. So if we summarize this part, first part, uh, the more love you give, the more beauty, will be created that you can, um, uh, what's the word? Receive. receive or perceive, perceive is the word. The more joy you will, ex or less love, less beauty you perceive, less joy. Or no love, at all. if you have, if there's no love at all, no beauty, no joy. So what you can uh, conclude then here with this part is that love is the source of joy. The more you have the ability to love, the more joy and happiness you will experience. So in essence, this means that we have quite a lot of control of what makes us happy. It's in our hands. And maybe some people like this message, like, yeah, but some people will be like, damn, it, then I have nothing to blame anymore. Like, it's, it's up to me. And uh, we believe that it's very important to grow your heart, grow your ability to love. But how does this work? So we can look at this as an example, a metaphor of the heart being a muscle. So when you exercise your muscle in a gym, you take some handlebars or whatever you find there, you get stronger. And the stronger it gets, the more you exercise your muscle, the more you can do, the more you can lift. So there's more potential for you to do greater, greater things. And the more weight you do, the more and more will happen. 
but also the opposite. If you stop using this muscle, then you will become weaker. And the things you could do before, the things you could lift before, you can't do it anymore because you're not that strong. So you have to keep on going. And I believe it's similar with love, that you have to keep loving things. You have to try new things and somehow be outside your comfort zone, doing new things or meeting new people or whatever it is that you feel a bit uncomfortable with. But when you do that, suddenly that thing will make you happy. You will feel comfortable and you have expanded your love to people, to things and everything. So it's quite similar to a muscle. So what is then the plan? If, we're, if it's so important to grow, how can we grow in relationship with others? What is the master plan? So then we think about, I think about this quote. Let's see. The family is the school of love. The patterns of behavior established in the family determine the patterns of behavior in society at large. So I believe that the family is really a place where you grow. It's a lot of challenges. You have to be with all kinds of people, your parents, siblings, and that I believe is the plan for us to grow, but also whatever we experience in the family, we can apply to society. So let's go here. I, create, I have some cute pictures there too. So let's start here with the child realm. You're a child and this realm is all about respecting your parents and listening to them and see how far it can go before there's consequences. No, but uh, it's, and this relationship is quite similar to if you're an employee and you have a boss, then you have to listen to them. Even if you don't agree always with your boss, you got to do it and you want the best. Ideally, you want to be loyal and you want the best for your boss and make them happy. And the same is with a child, with your parents. It's a very similar relationship. And then that goes on to suddenly there's maybe more kids in the house and you have to share this love with the siblings, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to share toys and and it's a lot of sudden there's conflicts, but it's a lot of joy. And this is a great place to learn. But also you practice this whenever you're in school, when you have uh, your uh, peers, schoolmates, your university mates, it's the same kind of thing, the same thing you experience. And whatever you experience in family, you can apply to society, whatever you learn in society, family. So it's very similar in the relationship. That's how we learn a lot. And when we're in this hanging out with our friends, same or whatever that we learn how to love those kind of equal to us then we're getting ready for the spouse realm and this is quite a different thing because you can't really practice this in society that would kind of be cheating or it will not be so ideal um, so this is quite different and i think the stages before is more about resemblance being similar but this one is more about being different being complementary you're not trying to be totally the same person but you're trying to complement and usually a difference attract which i find interesting and then you after a while i think you kind of become your partner in some ways without knowing it you kind of complement each other and through this there's so much love you become parents <laughs> and then suddenly you're not the child anymore but you have a parent to take care of there's a lot of you need to love them even though they not following your orders and you have to tell them to do things even though they say that they don't want to do it and they might not like you but you do it anyway because you know it's the best for them and this is the love they also say that you can't this is where you understand god if you're a parent so i'll see if that's true <laughs> <laughs> and similar uh, to this is being a teacher in a class having your students having to take care of them and you know make sure they don't fight so it's a similar relationship so you can see the family and the Society at large is a great place to grow. So it's, uh, this is the plan, but we know that this is not the reality. We have a lot of split families, siblings that don't want to talk, uh, bad relationships are all around the place. And I think it's uh, reflected in the society. And so in the beginning, I said that heart has the power to change the world. And what do, do, do I mean with this? So if we look at these two hearts here, let's say that the right heart is your the, all the beauty, all the joy you can experience in the world. And the left heart is your ability to love. So that means this is the ability you have to love. So that's how much beauty and joy you can experience in the world. But let's say that you try new things. You go there, you try and meet new people, whatever you do to challenge, then suddenly you grow and 
suddenly from the same world, nothing has really changed. The only thing that changed was you, that you learned to love. And then you experienced more joy and more beauty in the world. So in essence, the whole world changed for you because of that you've loved. But what is the opposite? Let's say that you instead uh, feel like you're a victim. You feel like everyone is against you. Everyone, nobody loves you and, uh, and you s blame everyone else. You feel like they, people are not nice to me. They don't love me and all this, everything is bad. And I don't want to try new things. It's just uncomfortable. Then suddenly your world shrinks and this can happen to anyone. And suddenly this is all the joy you experience in the world. So for the person before it, the world is a great place, but for them, it's a really bad place. And the interesting thing, I think, when I reflect is when you complain a lot that nobody loves you, nobody cares about you, it's usually you who are not caring or loving. Because I think uh, logically, if you don't love anyone, if you don't care about anyone, you don't actually know what that feels like, what that is. So you can have all people around you loving you, taking care of you, but you won't notice it. You're too uh, busy with other things, thinking about what you don't have but there's all these great things around. And uh, there is this quote, I think is good for this, the U2 song by Bono. I can't change the world, but I can change the world in me, which I thought was quite suiting for this. But I think I want to challenge the last, the first part of it. I can't change the world because of course we can't change others. But if you, whenever you see someone that's really inspiring, someone has done a lot of things and they're really happy. I'm sure all of us, our hobbies, whoever we meet, we got inspired by someone to start this. So we did affect someone. And I also feel like the, the whole plan with family is really crucial because I think if you have a really happy family, a lot of joy will come out, you have kids. And I think that can influence society a lot if you have a great family, because it's not just you, it's your children and they all can do something good for society. And if you think everyone, start having good families, relationship be better, then I think the world will change. And it can be in really small ways. So I think that for me is the way that we can change the heart by uh, growing and in our ability to love. So I want to end with this quote. A good man is one who can always embrace everything with his heart, wherever he sees and wherever he goes. So thank you.